My guest today is Todd Gardner. Todd, how you doing? I'm fine today. How are you? I'm doing great. How's the things in the Minneapolis area, the Twin Cities area? Oh, it was looking up for us. Everything was nice. It was warming up nicely. It was 60 degrees yesterday. And then uh, we got a foot or uh, an inch of snow dumped on us. And, oh, no. And that just, you know, kills your mood when, you know, you thought it was spring. The, <laughs> the weather said, uh uh uh, nah, nah, Maybe none for you were, yet. People are going outside too much. Yeah. God said, we can't have that. You like this get too much. We're inside. taking it away. <laughs> But we'll get uh, through it. It'll it'll pass. Right. It'll pass. All right. Uh, let's. I want to talk about a project you're building, or a, a product. It's a project and a product. Yeah, it's two uh, things. Request metrics, right? Have I got that right? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. The that's the name what of I'm it. It's not. It's you're still building. It's not available right yet, right? Not as of this recording, but we hope very soon. All right. Tell me what, what when it's ready. What will it be? Uh, so request metrics is going to be a web performance monitoring tool, and uh, what it's going to be able to do is it's going to uh, give you perspective on how fast your web pages and your API endpoints are performing for real end users. Um, in you know enterprise speak terminology, it is a real user monitoring product. As in, we're going to be gathering metrics from the web browsers themselves to see how how the actual timing is perceived from the end user. We'll gather up all those metrics, and we're going to do a really simplified version of these kind of tools um, so that any developer could uh, use this, understand the data that we're presenting without needing to like understand statistical models or complex query languages in order to figure out how it works. Okay, uh, give me an example of some of the metrics you're measuring. All right, so when when we're recording a uh, the performance of a page, let's say your checkout page, let's say you're an e-commerce mm -hmm. store and you have a checkout page and the performance of that page is really important for your revenue. You want to know how fast is it going to, are, are users loading it? Um, well, that's not just a single metric, right? There's, right? there's, we gather how long did each individual user take and then we roll that data together and we could produce an average, which is one perspective on it. We could also produce a median, which is, you know, how, um, you know, what's the middle uh, uh, value that it took a user to load it. We could produce um, a bunch of different like kinds of measurements about what the, the performance looks like. We roll a lot of those things together and show you a uh, uh, assumed performance kind of number that we think here is, here's the most relevant number that we think about on how this is performing. And then if you think that's interesting, if it's trending upwards or trending downwards, you can drill into that and see, um, and see how it actually breaks down. So we'll break down that performance number and show you, here's how many people loaded it in less than a second. Here's how many people loaded it in less than two seconds, less than four seconds, less than 10 seconds. Uh, so that you can actually dig into the data if you want to, but we're not going to make you understand the, those underlying um, complexities in order to to use the product. Interesting. Is it just page loading, or is it uh, all the different pieces of that, like the rendering of the page and the database accesses and the, uh, the speed of the request? Well, so it's going to be from the perspective of the end user. And so we're okay. not necessarily going to know every single step along the way. Like the difference between server work time and database query time, I'm not necessarily going to know that difference okay. unless I instrument your server. What I will be able to tell you is here's how long it took for the server to do its work versus here's how long it took the client to render that output. So okay. we are going to track the difference between uh, how long did it take the server to push those bytes out to you, which okay. is which implies all the things that would go into your server versus how much JavaScript and CSS and rendering do you have on this page to make it functional? Okay, so I'm I'm thinking of tools like uh, Glimpse and Wiseslow, and they do something similar to this that they they'll measure uh, the bottlenecks and and the performance of this and some it, some of those actually you drill down and say well yeah it's, it was slow in this request but the reason it was slow was because of this step which yes might be on the client might be on the server 
Exactly. The limitation of those tools is that when you run them, you're running it locally on your on your developer machine and you can like troubleshoot why something is, is slow or why something is, is not behaving the way you think it is. And that's still gonna be part of your developer arsenal. What we're going to be able to show you is when do you need to use those tools? When do you okay. need to break those tools out because in your production environment, the checkout page is now 40% slower today than it was yesterday. Okay. Because we're measuring that real user data um, so that you can go out and, and make the decisions of when do you need to look at your performance uh, based on what the actual customer experiences are. Will this tool run on the client or will it run on the server? It will run on the client. So this is going to be a JavaScript agent that you'll include uh, with your website. So uh, you have your HTML markup that you're shipping and you include our you know, snippet of JavaScript or you bundle it into your client side app. And we will actually gather all of these metrics from your, app, from your end users uh, transparently to you. Uh, most of this stuff comes from the browsers directly. We can just query for the data and then send it back. Other things we have to um, we have to do some of our own investigation to pull that data out, but we'll pull all the data directly from your end clients so that we can see uh, across all of the people using your site, what are the average and median and best and worst and expected performance of your user base. Oh, nice. So it's uh, it's running on the client just because the JavaScript is there. The, the, the client doesn't have to explicitly install anything. The client does not explicitly install anything. It loads the monitoring as part of loading your site, as part of loading your app. Okay, and even though it's running on the client, it's pushing data up to the server. So you're making some AJAX calls or something like that to store it server-side so that I, the developer, can aggregate this data, correct? Yeah, yeah, so when, uh, when we've gathered uh, an amount of performance data, we will send an AJAX request back to our service um, with just a cores request where we'll gather it, we'll aggregate it together. We're gonna do uh, roll, uh, roll up the data and store it in our system so that you as the, end, as the developer, you don't need to know how to capture this data. Okay. Um, you don't need to know where to keep it, where to put it or anything. We're going to automatically grab it, roll it up and give you the alerts that you need so that you know when you need to pay attention and when you can go about your day. One thing that I found really interesting about this project is not only are you sharing the code as you're building it, but you're actually sharing the process of building it. You are live streaming as you guys are pair, pair programming, right? Yeah, yeah. So we're building request metrics out in the open. Um, which means, uh, so as we as we build it, uh, our team is is mob programming together. So we're all working together mob on it. Mob right? yeah. programming is too yeah. narrow. Pair programming is two people, but we have three people, so it's a mob. <laughs> yeah. So we're, we're we're mob programming it together over video uh, video chat, and uh, we're recording our entire working session. And then a lot of people do this and like broadcast it on on Twitch or other kind of live streaming kind of things. And we looked at doing that, but but honestly, I think a lot of live coding is really boring because, because a lot of coding is like, you'll get stuck in kind of like a dead end or a loop or you'll get stuck in something that like, maybe your viewers don't wanna watch you struggle with, you know, understanding how something works. Uh, so we cut all that out. We, we uh, okay. edit our stuff down into like 15 to 20 minute video chunks where we cover one topic like how are we going to do something how do we implement this feature how do we build this test how do we do something like that um, edit it down give it some polish and put it out on youtube okay so it's not fair to say you're live streaming they can't watch your code live but they can see the results of it uh, a day or two later Yes, yes. So people can absolutely watch us. They can they can watch our team. They can ask questions. Um, it's just it's not an immediate live coding because uh, we just felt like there was too much too much downtime, too much uninteresting like backfiller in a lot of live coding that we didn't. I don't know. I guess I didn't think anybody would watch me sit around and make mistakes and copy off a Stack Overflow for three hours. They could or they'd, <laughs> it'd be a good opportunity to laugh at you, which is uh, yeah, sometimes yeah. entertaining. <laughs> absolutely. All right, now, are you uh, are you working on this outside of this mob programming sessions, or is it uh, are you just reserving that time as your right. request metrics time? Right now, we are we've done all the development on it together. Um, so we only do it during a mob programming session, which we do every day. 
um, uh, every day, every work day from like one to four o'clock in the afternoon, we are mob programming together. And so we're getting uh, an astounding amount of work done. Um, the videos take a little bit longer to get out because they, uh, you know, editing is a slow process. Preach so to the choir, brother. <laughs> the the videos are running about a month behind where we actually are. Okay. So uh, today we launched our 10th episode of Building Request Metrics, which is our video series. And it was all about how we stood up Redis on our Linux servers. Um, and that was actually quite a long time ago for us like in development mind because we are actively working on features and we have a UI and stuff like that. Uh, and our video series is still kind of in those infrastructure building blocks where like we figured out how do we, how do we deploy our .NET Core app to Linux? How do we install Redis? How do we build a cluster? How do we get certificates working? Um, that's, that's the majority of our video series to date. Uh, so you've been working on this for a month or two, it sounds like. Yeah, yeah, we we started working on this uh, in the middle of January or so, um, and really it took us a while to figure out how to do videos um, because the first the first couple of versions of them were were quite bad. They were quite bad and quite boring, and nobody liked them. And so we we had to iterate on them and get some feedback before we found something that that seemed to kind of gather an audience and people seemed to like it. Uh, so that was really the delay in getting the videos out is we wanted to produce content that we thought was interesting and different and not just not just a, a clone of our <laughs> video chat feeds. Are you just what what tools are you using? Is it just a Zoom channel or uh Yeah, right now we just right now we just record our Zoom channel. Okay. Um uh so uh we we connect via Zoom, but we're recording using uh, OBS so that we can do overlays and some zooming functions from the actual video feed. Hmm. Uh, and then we take that and we do some editing using like um, uh, a combination of Adobe and Apple tools, depending on who's doing it, to do like some editing and overlays and uh, some fun text effects. And, and then we publish it to YouTube. I use Adobe Premiere Elements myself. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, Eric, who's one of the other guys on the channel with me, is using Adobe. I personally just use iMovie mm -hmm. because I... Uh, because it's I, free. Because it's free and it's already <laughs> on my computer. <laughs> that, that totally makes sense. Like, that resonates with me, actually. <laughs> uh, so what's the, uh, what's the timeline now? Are, are you, do you have something that people can try now? Or what's, if not, what's the target for that? Not so, as of the re this recording, which is on April 3rd, we are we do not have anything that anybody can log into yet. Uh, oh. We are in internal beta right now. We're running request metrics on, on trackjs.com and on our other properties. That's your and other it product. looks really optimistic, um, but we're probably three to four to five weeks before we start bringing in other people still. Uh, but we do have a huge backlog of videos that are coming out that we're publishing like two or three a week. Um, so people can like subscribe to that and watch us build it and see our ideas and give us feedback on what's happening. Um, and if, uh, as soon as we open that, that up, we'll, we'll do videos showing off. Here's how it works. Here's, here's the end to end kind of description of, of the product. Great. Uh, send me the URL for that YouTube channel and I'll put it in the show notes. Will do. Will do. Uh, is this a commercial product? It will be a commercial product. However, it will be a cheap product. <laughs> right. So the the idea that we have behind this, um, kind of our, our core thesis of, of why we're building request metrics is that there's lots of other like web performance monitoring tools out there. And most of your listeners have probably heard of one or used one, but most of them tend to fall into or have two main problems. The first is that they're really complicated, is that they require you to capture lots and lots of data and understand a bunch of like the nitty gritty of performance and statistics to really understand when things are bad and when things are good. And the second problem is that they're all really expensive. They require like usually a fairly large, fairly committed IT organization behind them to have the ability to be running these tools. Hmm. And we want to make this a little bit more open. Uh, we want to make uh, request metrics really, really inexpensive and really, really easy 
for any team to add web performance monitoring to their, their tool belt. And so we're shooting to be able to give this for like $9 a month Great. For, you to, for you to be able to get this kind of uh, functionality. And a lot of our conversations in the video series kind of revolve around how do we give you enough data that a developer can digest, but, del but operate this in a way that we can make, that we can be profitable at $9 a month. And so right. we have to minimize our infrastructure, minimize the amount of data that we're capturing, minimize the, the overall overhead of our system mm -hmm. to hit these targets and deliver a product. And I think our outcome has been really good. The, the product is super fast uh, because we ended up storing all of our data in Redis. Uh, right. And so it's really just like loading like keys out of Redis and displaying them on a web page and so fast. Yeah. Um, I was, I'm curious if you uh, if you've changed your methodology or made major architectural shifts uh, as you're building this thing and as people are watching you build it. I don't know that we've made any major architectural shifts. We've definitely changed some things along the way. Um, we introduced a concept uh, kind of midway through the video series that we weren't planning on uh, because we discovered some new technologies uh, in the Microsoft ecosystem. Um, we found this, this project. Uh, we are actually looking at a Redis concept called Hyperlog Log, which allows you to basically capture how many, how many unique times has something happened uh, without tracking the individual records of every unique thing. Mm -hmm. And there was a package in the Microsoft ecosystem that, um, that mirrored that functionality called like cardinality something. Hmm. I don't know. I, yeah, um, but essentially it allowed us to create this data structure that we can just fire records into it and it will count how many times a unique thing has been in there without okay. ever storing the actual things that I've put in there. And what that lets us do is it lets us count how many unique people have visited this page. Oh, okay. It's, it's a really valuable thing because what we were seeing in our tests is occasionally the performance of a particular page would spike and it would just go super high, like ridiculously high. And we're like, why is that happening? Like there's, there's a bunch of hits to it. Like we're seeing like 20 different hits to this thing. Turns out it was 20 different hits from one person who just happened to be like in a weird state or on a terrible connection or something like that. And they were causing all of these problems. But, um, uh, that sort of like we have changed uh, our feature set based on these early betas and and what we are what we're discovering in the .NET community. Very cool. Um, anything that you want to talk about that we haven't covered yet? I think that's that's it. I mean, the request metrics is is occupying most of my time and dreams these days. Oh yeah, uh, <laughs> that's kind of what I'm obsessing about. And I have they're at uh, requestmetrics.com. Have I got that right? Yeah, requestmetrics.com right is now. There, how much information is out there now? Uh, right now, it's it's basically a video, or it's a series of our video feed. Um, okay. In the in the next couple of weeks, it'll probably be replaced with more descriptions of our product, with links out to the videos so that you can see how it was built. Uh, but that's going to be you know another step along the way to standing up a new a new online service. Oh, I look forward to seeing it, and I look forward to the videos as well. Yeah, awesome. Thank you, man. I really appreciate the time you spent with me today, and I uh, hope you stay safe in this crazy times we're having. Yeah, you too. You too. Maybe the best technology is the friends we made along the way. <laughs>